I'm Brian May in the Cal OES Operations Center, and I want to give you an update on the Thomas Fire. Now in its 13th day, it is now the third largest wildfire in California history. And to get more on this fire and the activity today with the red flag warnings, we're actually going to go to the front lines, to guys who have been on the fire lines all week long. My co-worker, Sean Boyd and Jonathan Goodell, are both at San Ysidro Ranch in Montecito. And Sean, I want to start, just tell me kind of where you are and what you're seeing today. Well, it is uh, coincidental, I think, and maybe even a bit ironic that we are here at San Ysidro Ranch, which is a very historical location here in the Santa Barbara area. This is where Jacqueline Onassis Kennedy and uh, the president got married. Well, not where they got married, but actually where they had their honeymoon uh, way back in the 60s. This is San Ysidro Ranch. Uh, we have firefighters who are stationed out here right now, uh, prepared to defend this historical location in what is really becoming an, an historical fire. We are in an area that overlooks or is overlooked by the mountains where this fire is burning right now. The smoke right now is at its very worst in the last week that we have been here. Uh, firefighters, we have Cal OES engines right over here who are refilling their water tanks and are, uh, again, on defensive measures. The wind out here has been incredible. It has been the windiest that we have seen it in at least the last seven days. In fact, our um, our hotel was evacuated today. There was a power outage, and uh, the wind has created such a mess with uh, the ash and debris that is in the air. It's incredibly dangerous. We cannot breathe without these things, and every now and then you get that particulate matter into the eyes and it burns. So right now the fire is really giving firefighters a heck of a time in trying to not only contain it, but to keep it from spreading down here into the urban interface. They went from wildland interface to the urban interface, uh, which is known in the in the fire community as WUI, W-U-I, WUI. It sounds funny, but it's not a funny matter. The wildland to urban interface is now what they're dealing with. They've transitioned to that interface and defensible uh, posturing for these homes and we are in an area where there are multi-million dollar homes Oprah Winfrey and uh, Ellen DeGeneres live not too far from where we are now uh, multi-million dollar homes, beautiful and it of course would be a shame to see any house go regardless of the price but the area here it truly is beautiful but uh, the smoke is as thick as we've ever seen it in the last seven days as I said and it is blowing right out of the canyon what is interesting come this way Phil uh, we're going to show you something here, which I think is really interesting. Okay, right behind me. I don't know how well that's showing up in the shot. But over here behind me, you have the smoke billowing out from one canyon. And then a little bit to the right, there's blue sky. And then a little bit farther, it's more smoke. So we're right here in the middle of what should be a beautiful spot. But because we have winds blowing down the canyons from both sides of us, that smoke is just swirling around through here. And you can see the, the wind changes periodically. The wind will come in from one direction, and then it'll slow down, and then it'll be calm. And then it'll come from the other direction. So this is the kind of thing that firefighters are having to contend with. They can be in canyons side by side, but that wind is going to be completely different depending on where they are in those canyons. Sean, I know you talked about you guys were told. evacuated in the hotel this morning, and you're among thousands. There were literally thousands of evacuations in Santa Barbara and Montecito. Are, are those evacuations still ongoing as we speak now? Yes, they are. In fact, uh, the latest numbers that we got uh, just a little while ago, in fact, uh, 20 to 25,000 evacuated from Santa Barbara, many of those coming as a result of this current change in fire behavior. I want to ask you quickly, Sean, I know the winds have been the big threat today, those red flag warnings. As you and I are talking now, are you able to hear or see any aircraft? I know at one point in time they were struggling even to get aircraft in the air to fight the fire from up above. Yeah, about an hour and a half ago, we saw some of the big uh, helicopters, the kind of funny looking ones that have the hose hanging down from the middle. They were flying. And I think the reason for that is that they're big enough they can handle some of these winds. But we have not seen any other aircraft, at least in the last hour. These red flag warnings are making these dangerous conditions and they're going to continue. So if there are residents watching this that are in the area that could be affected, let's give them some advice, Sean. What should residents do if they're in these areas? 
Well, first of all, they need to pay attention to any of the alerts that come through their cell phones. Those those uh, wireless emergency alerts are critical in conveying information uh, to them about when and where to evacuate. In fact, we got several of them this morning when our hotel was evacuated down along the waterfront. Uh, the other thing to do is know where your shelters are. Listen to the radio. A lot of people are having problems getting those signals to their phones. And when they evacuate, they leave their home, they're in the car. Often they're not going to get those alerts or the signals to their to their phone in their car. So turn on the radio, listen to both AM and, AF, and FM radio, which is what we were doing today. They're giving a lot of information. A lot of the TV stations are feeding their signal to the radio stations and giving continuous coverage. So that's extremely important. Turn on that radio when you get in the car and make sure you do not blow past any of the road closures. It's critical because those roads are closed for a reason. Uh, it's for your safety. So know your evacuation route, know where you're going, and get there safely. Let people know that uh, where you're going to be. Sean, thank you very much. Great work out there. You guys stay safe as well. I know you guys have been down there for quite a long time. As Sean mentioned, keep watching, keep monitoring TV, radio, your local first responders. We've got all of the latest fire information on wildfirerecovery.org. Thanks for watching.